ברוכים הבאים לדקדוק דקות. This video is on the Nifal imperfect. You'll remember from our evolving stem chart that the Nifal is in the simple column, passive row. So generally, the Nifal has simple action that it's describing, and it does so most often in the passive voice, which is a passivization of the pa'al, most generally. Not all the time, but commonly. And so, in the imperfect, our vocal pattern and our visual sign is demonstrated in this uh, model verb here, yishaver. Yishaver. You may recall hearing this verb from Jonah in the first half of the textbook. Yishaver is uh, the verb, he will be broken to pieces, or he will break, be broken apart, or it will. Um, and so you see all of the visual signs of the Nifal imperfect in this word, and you also hear the vocal pattern. So the visual signs are uh, a hyric under the prefix, but the most obvious visual sign is the doggish forte in the first visible root letter. I say first visible root letter because sometimes the first root letter may disappear and the doggish forte could be in the second root letter. Most often it's in the first root letter, but first visible root letter. Uh, so you have hyric under the prefix, comets under the first root letter, and atsere under the middle root letter, giving you a vocal pattern of e-a-a, e-a-a. The nifal imperfect will almost always have three syllables like that, e-a-a. <clears throat> but you may be wondering why there's a doggish forte in the first visible root letter. You may also be wondering where on earth is the noon? That's such a clear sign of an e-fall here in the perfect. Well, the reason why the noon is absent and there is a doggish in the first root letter will become clear in a moment. So here, let's uh, draw out the word as if it would have the noon. We have um, the yod prefix, the noon sign of the nifal, and sheen bait resh of the root of yishaver. Because noon is one of the weak letters, it gets claustrophobic, you might say, when a prefix is attached on one side. So it's got letters on both sides. It doesn't quite know what to do. And so as people often do when they're claustrophobic, they curl up into a little ball. So the noon disappears by curling into a little ball. It's like one of the little roly-poly bugs that you see under logs in the woods. And when it rolls up into a ball, it gets gobbled up by the first root letter, by the following letter. And so that's what's happening right here. Now sometimes that first visible root letter is a guttural, in which case it rejects the doggish forte, because the doggish forte is the doubling doggish, so it says no thank you. And so what happens is that uh, the vowel under the prefix would be a hyric, but in this case, the dagish makes that hyric a tsere. It uh, does compensatory lengthening, is what it's called, to the hyric, but we like to say it tserarizes the hyric, making the hyric a tsere. Tserarizes the hyric, if that's helpful for you to remember it. So let's take a look at a couple of other examples. These are examples that are, uh, appear in this chapter's, ver or this chapter's section of Genesis 1. Yikavu, yikavu, which is uh, it will be gathered or let it be gathered. This is the, the waters being gathered into a single place. You can see the hyric under the prefix, the comets under the first root letter, and the noon the noon that was assimilated into the following letter, there is a dagish forte in the kof. Yikavu from Genesis 1.9. We also here have another example from Genesis 1.9 of compensatory lengthening or of the 
of the, the dagish being rejected by the reish and terrorizing the hirik. Terra e. Terra e is let it appear or let it be seen. Uh, and it's a feminine imperfect because the it is the earth, or the dry ground. So we have the tsere under the prefix and uh, comets under the first root letter. And you see that pattern working itself out pretty consistently here in the paradigm. This is a, a paradigm with strong consonants, so it's this pattern, hirik, comets, and tsere. And so you see the hirik consistently, except for the aleph, the aleph prefix always chooses a segol over a, over a hirik. But you see the dagish forte in the first root letter very consistently all the way down, and the comets under the first root letter consistently all the way down. Those are the things that you want to look for when you're looking at a nifal imperfect. Lech le shalom.